Zooey Mama! Red Guardian is coming out soon, and I believe he's going to be the best card that comes out in this April season of Marvel Snap, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to talk about his best synergies, his best targets, cards that he just absolutely wrecks, give you a couple deck ideas, and then just give my overall thoughts on Red Guardian and the spotlight cash he's in, and whether or not he's worth chasing after, and spoiler alert, I think he is. Okay, I think he might be the best tech card we have coming to Marvel Snap since Mobius. Okay, so to get started, Red Guardian is a three cost, three powered card coming out on April 16th with the on reveal ability to afflict the lowest power enemy card here with minus two power and remove its text. Okay, it just silences any card. It's like when you hit an ongoing card with Rogue or Enchantress but the card doesn't have to be ongoing. He's just gonna pick a card, remove its text, it's not doing anything, and he's also giving it minus two power. Okay, so he's got two abilities, he's hitting something with minus two power, and he's hitting the same thing with this remove its text, you know, silence ability. So let's get into his best synergies. So first up, I think Red Guardian pairs very well with a card like Killmonger. Okay, Red Guardian is searching for the lowest power enemy card that your opponent has. So if there's some one cost cards in the way, maybe a location generated squirrels, or maybe they played like a spider ham that already popped off its on reveal and it has one power, you want to get that out of the way, and that way you can hit something actually worth hitting. Okay, so Killmonger is great for just clearing crap, okay, taking out the trash. A card like Polaris, similar kind of thing. You could move a cheap card away that you don't want to target with a Red Guardian, or you can actually move the card you want to target if it's like a two cost card, Move it away from something with lower power and then slap down Red Guardian. And then we've got Synergy with Absorbing Man. I mean, if you're playing like a Destroy deck, you could play Red Guardian to shut off X-23 in one lane and the next turn just hit Absorbing Man in a different lane to hit Wolverine or, or Deadpool or something. I mean, there are some decks where they just have multiple good targets and you can just disable multiple things and that's going to be pretty awesome. Now let's talk about some of his best targets. So once Red Guardian is released, discard players are going to be running for the hills because cards like Dracula get absolutely wrecked by Red Guardian. I mean, he's a 4-1. He's often going to be the lowest power card on your opponent's side of the board until after the end of the game, you know, when he hits Apocalypse that's already been discarded and he becomes like 17 power. Red Guardian turns him into a 4 cost, minus 1 power card with no ability. That's absolutely disgusting. It also hits... Morbius and Meek, I mean Red Guardian serves it to discard. He also serves it up to destroy decks. Like I mentioned, if you can shut off a Wolverine, that hurts the power being added to him. And also, you know, the discounts to death, pairing up no more. You can shut off a Deadpool or an X-23, in which case you kill your opponent's ramp. I mean, Red Guardian just really gives it to both of these archetypes. And then we got some Silky Smooth running around. Okay, if you can hit an Angela early, even after she triggered and became a 2-2, set her back to being a 2-0 with no ability, you just turned her into a rock, okay? Just like you did with Wolverine. You could even hit Craven. I mean, these decks that have two cost cards, you know, even something like Collector, these two cost cards that are gonna start ramping up, he just gives it to him, okay? Even, you know, cards like Sunspot or Nebula and High Evo, early game cards that snowball, Red Guardian picks them apart. Now to talk about the good, the bad, and the beautiful for Red Guardian. Let's start with the good. First up, he hard counters some cards, okay? This can just be a win condition, and that makes him great in conquest mode. I mean, again, if you get matched versus someone playing discard, and you can just disable their Dracula time and time again, or just turn off, you know, a destroyed players like X-23 or Wolverine consistently, it's gonna put your opponent in a really tough spot, okay? He just does hard counter some stuff. And he hits the untouchables, okay? These are cards that are so hard to deal with. Ongoing cards have had answers in the game. We've got Rogue, we've got Enchantress, we've even got stuff like Super Scroll, but cards like Angela, cards like Dracula, they feel untouchable, okay? Lady Deathstrike can hit some of these cards, but most people aren't playing Lady Deathstrike. She just get a little bit of a buff and she's in the spotlight caches alongside Red Guardian, but she still costs five. She doesn't have all the good targets and even against a destroy deck, you know, she wouldn't work in that case. Red Guardian hits these cards that are so 
hard to reach. I mean, even if you wanted to turn off like Daredevil, okay? There's no other way to turn off Daredevil unless you killed him with Lady Deathstrike. So he hits these cards that are just hard to counter and people aren't used to having these cards countered. He will give a card minus two power even if it doesn't have an ability that's really great to disable, okay? Maybe you hit your opponent's on reveal card. I don't know, maybe they played Spider-Ham. You play Red Guardian, he hits Spider-Ham, all right? Disabling Spider-Ham's ability doesn't matter unless your opponent was planning to bounce him back, but he still gives Spider-Ham minus two power. So even when he doesn't have best targets, he still just gives him minus power and that's awesome. And he doesn't require synergy, okay? It might be good to play him alongside, you know, Killmonger or, or Polaris, as I mentioned, but he doesn't need it. You can just slap him in a deck and get good value, kind of like you do with Shang-Chi or even a card like Mobius. He's just a very flexible tech card and he's got a nice stat line to back it up. And I think he's gonna be very strong because of that. To talk about some of the weaker aspects of Red Guardian, you may face some decks where they just don't have good targets. Uh, if your opponent is playing mostly on reveals, unless they're bouncing those cards back to hand, on reveals are not good targets for Red Guardian, okay? He's good against ongoings, and he's good against cards that are trigger based. You know, they don't have the ongoing effect, but they power up or get some value when something happens, right? Something like Nebula, Sunspot, Dracula, all that stuff. Um, so in cases where he doesn't have good targets, he's just kind of like a three five. He is worse without priority. You wouldn't want a case where your opponent has Dracula on board and you play Red Guardian to hit the Dracula, but they have priority and maybe, you know, they flipped over a Meek or even a Rock if they like drew a Rock for some reason. And now Red Guardian hits the Rock, okay? If you have priority, you know what you're gonna hit. If you don't have priority, there's a chance that your opponent plays something smaller that turn and ruins your plans. He's weaker against Luke Cage because he loses that minus two power debuff on your opponent's cards. And so if he doesn't have good targets and your opponent has a Luke Cage, then he is just like a 3-3. Three, three. That's kind of a you know niche scenario, but he is weaker against Luke Cage. And then if there are multiple targets that have the same power, you know, maybe you're playing against a deck and they've got like Cerebro and Mystique next to each other and they're both zero power, he's gonna hit one and he's gonna hit one randomly. Okay, so just keep that in mind. If there's multiple cards on that location with the same power, he's gonna choose one randomly. This is just my friendly reminder to like this video if you're enjoying it and subscribe for more if you have not already because I cover every single new card release in Marvel Snap and I give my honest thoughts and opinions about it. Now to talk about Red Guardian at his reasonable worst and his reasonable best, his worst or his floor is that he just hits nothing. Maybe you played him on an empty lane because you just wanted to play something and your opponent had nothing on board or you hit something whose ability didn't really matter if you turn it off and your opponent has Luke Cage, okay? If your opponent doesn't have Luke Cage, mostly his floor is gonna be that he's a 3-5, okay? Uh, but just a 3-3, three, three, it's kinda right about the line of being viable, still three power, which is nice, but you wouldn't purposely play that card, okay? It's not super competitive. In terms of his ceiling, his ceiling is that he does give a card minus two power, and he turns off an ability that is crucial for your opponent, okay? He turns off an Iron Man, or a Dracula, or a Cerebro, okay? Just something really good. He really serves it to your opponent and he basically wins his own lane because of it, okay? And that would be insane. I'm not sure if that's overpowered. I think it's right about the line of overpowered. If you had a 3-5 that consistently hit something great, okay? It'd kind of be like if Rogue was a 3-5 and you were consistently running into ongoing decks, you know, maybe it's overpowered right about the line, but not something insane like, you know, a 30 power Red Hulk. But what's nice about his ceiling is I think it's pretty close to his average. I think on average, you do try to save Red Guardian for when he's needed, for when he's giving the most value, okay? Just like a tech card, right? You don't always play Rogue on turn three. Sometimes you save Rogue for turn five or six. You really wait for a good target because that's when you get huge value. So I think often he will disable a card. If you play him on curve, it's probably gonna be like a two cost card or even you know one cost like Sunspot or Nebula and he's given something minus two power, and you're really saving for when you need it. So I think often he will be a 3-5 that causes disruption. Okay, again, like a 3-5 rogue, that's a huge buff. And Red Guardian has more targets than Rogue does. He's just got more targets in the game. He's not limited to ongoings. Again, he's hitting these untouchables. So I think his average value is actually very high. I think his average value is very close 
to his ceiling. I do feel like he's pretty consistent there and he doesn't have this huge range of his floor to his ceiling, which is just good for consistency. So to get into my first deck for Red Guardian, we're looking at a Toxic Surfer list, okay? I've just swapped Red Guardian into this list and this is really good because we already have Absorbing Man in here. Absorbing Man is already good in Toxic Surfer because he can hit Brood if needed or you can even use him to copy an Ironheart or a Silver Surfer, but you can also use him to copy Red Guardian. Okay, again, if you're against Destroy, you want to turn off multiple things, you go right ahead. Turn three Red Guardian into turn four Absorbing Man. And the rest of this deck, you know, it's just kind of like clockwork. This deck's pretty popular. You've probably seen it a bunch. We just got Red Guardian as this nice tech option. If you have a great target, great. If you don't, you don't have to play him because there's plenty of other three costs here to use. Next up, I've got this Tempo tech list, which I've put together. I love playing Tempo style decks, decks where you really fight for priority and then look to mess with your opponent with something like Legion or even the new Sandman. Okay, we've got new 5-7 Sandman in here who's on reveal, makes it so both players can only play one card next turn. If you play them on turn five, it's kind of like Old Wave, okay? So this deck, it's just nice. We've got early game power with Jeff, Lizard, Silk. They help us keep priority. Killmonger can clear out some one drops if we wanna you know, clear those lanes to have a nice target for Red Guardian. Luke Cage is great synergy with Lizard and also with Legion if you copy locations that are giving negative power. Gladiator is big power. Shang-Chi will kill some big stuff. Crossbones, newly buffed, 410. He's gonna help us keep priority. And we like priority for Legion. We like priority for Doctor Doom. We like priority for Red Guardian. So this is probably the list I'm most excited for. And lastly, we've got a Cerebro 3 deck, okay? And I think Red Guardian's really good in here. Now, when I think of Red Guardian in my head, I think of him as a 3-5, okay? Because again, unless your opponent has Luke Cage, he's almost always going to be a 3-5, uh, whether he disables an ability or not is a different discussion, but he's usually a 3-5, but it's always minus two on your opponent's side of the board. So Red Guardian himself will have three power. He works with Cerebro 3. Okay, it just gives another tech option. You have another way to shut off some of your opponent's cards and Cerebro 3 can just go really hard, especially when we've got, you know, like Valkyrie in here, Ravana giving discounts to Cerebro and Mystique. Cerebro 3 just kind of works. Now, if you are concerned to get Red Guardian, it is important to look at his spotlight cash. Okay, so starting April 16th through the 23rd, Red Guardian, Lady Deathstrike, and High Evolutionary should be in the spotlight caches, although who knows when there's going to be some game-breaking bug again that doesn't let you get the card you want. But if that doesn't happen, this will be the spotlight cache, okay? So what are we looking at here? In terms of token value, this is good. We've got two Series 5 cards in Red Guardian and High Evo, one Series 4 card in Lady Deathstrike. This has been kind of the norm. They pair up an existing Series 4 and Series 5 card, and all the new cards are coming out as Series 5. So in terms of token value, it's pretty good value. In terms of being competitive, you know it's good. And that mostly comes from High Evo. I'm not judging Red Guardian here too much because we do have to see how he performs. High Evo's great. If you don't own him, he's always worth chasing after in spotlight caches. He is S tier for your collection because he just creates his own archetype. He's not really replaceable. Uh, Lady Deathstrike is okay. She just got a buff. I do think she's a bit more flexible, but this is really High Evo carrying the competitive aspect for me. In terms of the variants, they're good. Um, I like this Red Guardian one, I think it's solid. I really like the Lady Deathstrike one. I think this one is really good. I'm gonna go after it. I'm not too hyped on the High Evo variant. I think he does have better ones already in the game. So that's how I view this current Spotlight week. Now it's time for my final reviews on Red Guardian himself. Here's a close up view of his Spotlight variant. Very nice, I love the facial expression. First up, in terms of being fun, I think he's good. Um, I think if you are not trying to focus on him, his fun level will just seem okay. He would just seem kind of like a tech card. But if you really are trying to maximize him, I think there's levels to it, okay? I don't think everybody is gonna play Red Guardian well. I think you're gonna want times where you purposely, you know, play that Killmonger, play that Polaris to separate out the best targets. You hold on to Red Guardian, Play him on turn five or six, potentially. You know, really wait for good value. But there's gonna be people that just wanna play him right on curve. So he's kind of dynamic in that sense. But I do think that adds interest, you know, adds depth, uh, just a layer of skill. 
In terms of being flexible, I think he's awesome. I really do think Red Guardian is the most flexible and best uh, tech card since Mobius M. Mobius, okay? He fits into any deck. Sure, you can try to help out his targeting, like I mentioned, but you don't have to. You can just put him in a deck like you would put Rogue in deck, okay? You just slap him in, and against some opponents, he will just clean house. In terms of being competitive, I think he's good, okay? I was kind of teetering the line between good and amazing. I think it will depend on the meta a bit. You know, we've been seeing a lot of Destroy and Discard. So I think right away, Red Guardian might feel amazing. However, if Destroy and Discard rotate out of the meta, he may not have as many great targets, okay? Maybe those decks rotate out, maybe Silky Smooth rotates out, and we've got more just like on reveal stuff flying around with a bunch of cheap on reveal cards that will make it a bit harder for Red Guardian. Also, Zabu was just nerfed. Zabu was going to be the best target for Red Guardian. You know, people love to say, oh, second dinner, you know, nerfs these cards to make new ones uh, better and sell the new cards. Zabu is going to be great for Red Guardian. The fact that they changed Zabu from a two cost ongoing to be a two cost on reveal is an indirect nerf to Red Guardian the week before he got released. Okay, it completely counters the argument that second dinner nerfed Zabu to help sell upcoming cards. But regardless, I think Red Guardian still has plenty of good targets. I think he's very competitive. I think if you play him well, he might be amazing in terms of competitive and in conquest mode, I think he might be amazing. But overall, I think the average player will get good value out of him. Now, my recommendation for Red Guardian is get him. Okay, I, I love this card. It's my number one card of the season. It's my number one card in a while. I think it's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna put him in so many decks. I'm really excited for him. And I think it's a good spotlight cash. Okay, again, if you need high Evo, worth going after. And I personally will be going after this awesome Lady Deathstrike variant. So let me know what you think of Red Guardian in the comments below. What combos you're excited to test him out in. What decks you think he's gonna wreck. I mean, I talked about how he wrecks Discard and Destroy and maybe Silky Smooth. Is there anything else? He just absolutely shuts down and ruins your opponent day. Let me know what you think. And until then, stay positive. I'll see you next time.